Determining the proportions in a work of art is, by nature, the most important phase of painting and drawing. If the proportions of the elements in a still life, portrait, landscape, figure, or similar motifs are not well defined, it will not look realistic. It is therefore very important that students learn to understand proportions well, because when this is learned by heart, it will quickly become a simple routine that you won't need to think about. Painters often use the principle of vision as a tool for determining proportions of elements. Basically, proportions can be determined by sighting, which is based on comparing shapes or elements on an observed motif and thus obtaining a more accurate ratio of dimensions. A longer object, such as a pencil or paintbrush, is usually used for sighting, and in our case, we will use a digital pen, the one that comes with your digital drawing pad, for determining the exact dimensions of the elements in the artwork while making a still life painting. Let's start by choosing the pencil tool and adjust the diameter, pressure, and opacity in the tool options. Next, let's draw a central line in order to distinguish which elements will be placed on either side of the center of the painting. By the way, you can easily draw straight lines vertically and horizontally in paint by pressing the shift button on your keyboard while drawing. You can also add a new layer for the central line. You will be able to remove it later, but in this video, I will have all the strokes on the same layer. Next, we add the rough outer lines of the elements in the painting. In the beginning, we try to make all the lines we draw lighter and thinner, and later we will gradually darken and thicken them once we know all the sizes are right. The easiest way to start is by adding simple geometric shapes like circles, ovals, squares, and so on to get a rough understanding of the shapes and their proportions to each other. Feel free to add as many guiding lines as you deem necessary while drawing the shapes of the objects in the artwork. Artists often initially also draw sides of objects that are not visible. For example, here we have made ovals where the vase is, even though it won't be transparent once we are done, just to make it easier to draw accurately. When we have finished setting up the elements, we can now start adding longer strokes to define the shapes even more. Because we are creating a black and white drawing, the differences in light are achieved with thicker and thinner lines, and by applying greater intensity of shadows on darker parts of objects. Working digitally offers many advantages compared to classical drawing on paper. In classical drawing, after erasing mistakes with an eraser, the paper becomes saturated. In digital painting, you can easily delete if you make a mistake and always place a new drawing. Now we can already see the different brightnesses of the objects and as paint offers the ability of using different tools, and in particular the airbrush tool, will allow us to quickly tone objects before we start the shading process.
change the pressure and opacity to get lighter or darker shadings. If we have shaded some shapes excessively, it is always possible to correct it with a white pencil or with the eraser tool. We can also start gradually adding some detail to the background of the artwork. A well-designed background can enhance and supplement the drawn shapes in the front of the artwork. Once you are happy with the shadings done with the airbrush, go back to the pencil tool to continue adding lines and hatching to give your sketch more detail. At this point, we also want to make sure that all of the objects in the artwork have their own shadows on the base on which they stand. This helps to make the drawing more realistic as the objects won't be floating in space. Keep adding shadows, highlights, and details until the still life looks as near to your real life example as possible.